Hello there, my name is Don Tipping and I'm here in southwestern Oregon at my farm where we have Siskiyou Seeds, which is a bioregional organic seed company where we grow, trial, breed, and curate about 800 varieties of open pollinated organic and heirloom seeds. And today I wanted to share some of my insights from nearly three decades of working with seeds, growing them, breeding them, observing them, and then distributing them through our seed company throughout the United States and Canada. And the way I see it is seed occupies this interesting position within what supports culture and society and civilization. Much like you need air to breathe and water to drink, and we all need food to eat and a roof over our heads. Air and water are soundly in the commons. They are collectively owned, managed, stewarded by humanity, if you will. Whereas seed has moved into this position of being privatized uh, with all of this intellectual property and secrecy. And I started a seed company back in 2010, Siskiyou Seeds, because of my passion for working with seeds and wanting to share them. But now I struggle with the idea that we've commoditized seed and you know, we put them in these packets to make it easy to distribute them. While simultaneously, we're educating people how to grow seeds through the Seed Academy training. It's basically a three-day seed school we do here on the farm. And also providing lots of information through our blog and YouTube channel and other ways that we are educating people about growing seed with our ultimate North Star being that the idea of a seed company becomes irrelevant because societally that we've adopted seed saving as an intrinsic element of what it means to have a resilient agrarian community. We're not there yet because that's what a North Star is. Navigators don't reach the North Star. It's merely a navigational guide. So I've come up with this intermediary step and I was really inspired by my friend Rowan White who for many years uh, she and her family stewarded the Sierra Seed Cooperative down in the foothills of the Sierras near Nevada City, California. And she patterned that off of the Community Supported Agriculture Program, CSA. And so she started a seed CSA and I was inspired by that and with her blessing asked, you know, what do you think of us doing a similar program? And we began doing that back in about 2014. So now here we are 10 years later and I really now see this as our community supported seed program. And we have four different membership tiers where you're not really buying seeds. You're gaining access to a community of gardeners and growers. And as part of that community, we are sending you once a month, February, March, April, May, and June. And then some of the tiers that include garlic will also send you a fall shipment for garlic. We're sending you seeds that are the appropriate things to grow along with growing instructions. But we're also including things that aren't in our catalog or aren't on the website because they were gifted to us in some unique uh, fashion and they're in development. So for instance, one of the uh, collections of seed that I distribute through our community supported seed program are these seeds that are indigenous to the Southwest uh, desert regions that came through a friend from the University of New Mexico. And so these are unique chilies and beans that you're not gonna find anywhere else. And I personally don't really feel good selling them, but I wanna share them with people with the idea that they'll give us feedback and, sh and tell us how did they grow for you? What did you like about them? So those membership tiers that we have, we have a small garden uh, membership, uh, you know, so it's small in my mind would be 20 feet by 20 feet, 20 by 50 feet. You know, something that's manageable for your average person in their backyard, or if you were to, you know, divide that up into the equivalency of raised beds, that might be four to eight raised beds. So that's the small uh, seed CSA share. We also have a large one, and that's for somebody that has a, a larger backyard where they're really doing gardening is, is one of their, their most enthusiastic pastimes. And a garden like this might include strawberries and raspberries and even some fruit trees, maybe even some chickens, something like that. We're not sending you chickens or eggs, but that's a cool idea. 
for somebody that is in a region to partner with us to really help foster resilience. We'll get there later. And then we have a homestead level uh, seed CSA, and that's for somebody that's really looking at growing a good portion of their own food. So we're including more staples like popcorn, flower corn, more winter squash, dry beans, things of this nature, uh, more storage onions, garlic, things where you're really trying to fill your pantry with vegetables. And I know for a lot of people right now in the United States, we're making this video at the end of 2023 and inflation spiraling out of control and the people's, what they're spending every month to feed their family and pay all the bills is, is significant. And growing your own food is not only a wonderful thing to do for your physical and mental health and your nutritional health, but it is a way to substantially uh, def you know, cut down on how much money you spend on buying food. And I know too, one of the reasons I helped start a cooperative CSA years ago, and one of the things I loved hearing from our members is that when they got that box of produce, they felt, and then they had recipes that went along with it, they felt like they wanted to do whole foods cooking for themselves and their family because they felt guilty if they didn't use the turnips, the rutabagas, the winter squash, all these things that they may not go out and buy otherwise, parsnips. They are cooking with whole foods. They are shortening supply chains. They have connections with their growers and all that. And so our community supported seed program takes that a step further because this is food that never needs to go on a truck. It never needs a barcode. It never needs a twist tie, a plastic bag, any of that. You're going seed to soil then mixing sunlight and water right to your table. And that is empowerment. And that's really what we're trying to do. So the North Star for our Community Supported Seeds Program is how to empower people to take control of their, their life, their nutrition, and their health. And I firmly believe that unless you're growing some food for yourself, then you're, you really don't have much of a, a platform, so to speak, to, to criticize the overarching systems that are pr providing your food. So, you know, and similarly, you could be harvesting some rainwater so that you have a little bit more resilience or uh, having better passive solar, letting the sun heat your home or letting trees shade your house instead of using electricity to power air conditioning. So you get the train of thought I'm thinking, and this is really all off of this patterns to details approach that's so intrinsic in permaculture. And then the fourth tier we have is a flower seed CSA. So in this one, we're just sending you flower seeds at the appropriate timing that you'd be planting along with guidance of how you do that. And where this is interesting is food is important, but nobody brings food, you know, or, uh, you know, vegetables, let's say, to a wedding uh, as a gift or a funeral or a baby shower or some other significant event, a get well soon party. Uh, but flowers are, have a unique entry point in that they are nourishment for the soul. So the kind of person that might be interested in our flower seed CSA, perhaps you have a friend that's getting married and, and, you, and you know that timing and you can begin to grow the flowers. So then instead of just sending money to a gift registry, you are doing something that's actually unique to you and your soul of bringing the gift of beauty to an event like that. So again, those four tiers, the membership for them is only open till February 1st. And for you get a discount on all the seeds. It's, you know, so it's a good deal financially, but if you understand, that's why I wanted to create a video to explain a little bit of the bigger paradigm behind this aspect of what we do is decommodifying seed. So you're buying into a membership and then ideally it's a two-way street or circular. We're sharing seeds and information with you and what we would like in return is feedback uh, about how do these things do, what, you know, maybe a recipe that comes from your family lineage of how you use parsnips or something like that. And also pictures, if you're willing to share, of you and your family and your garden, or just your garden if you don't wanna, that we can use to depict what uh, a connection with your food source looks like. So, over time, you know, this is taking it beyond testimonials, if you will, and really cultivating community.
in that regard and building resilient systems. And that helps provide a feedback loop for us as seed stewards of how to curate taking seeds out of this tokenizing, you know, this is worth this much, this is worth this many dollars, and into relationality because I really think going forward, part of the, and I'll close here, the invitation with inflation and the economics of being alive in this time is to place our value not on dollars or on things but on relations and family and you can go back before the Great Depression and most people live this way. Their true net worth and value was about their family and their community, their watershed, the land and you can feel there's a deep hunger in humanity to remember, which actually means to become a member of, again, these, these ways that are humanity. And this, this last 50, 75 years we've been alive, I'm only 50, so that's how, you know, my perspective, is we'll look back in the history books or whatever format, the storytelling around the fire, at that this was an anomaly. So if, you're, if this is, speaks to you in any way, check out our Seed CSA, our Community Supported Seed Programs, and you can join this program at these various membership tiers. And also, if you are interested, provide feedback. Send us an email, a note, or a message in whatever way works for you to let us know uh, what you think of all this idea. And we can begin to really move the needle in the direction of resilience and these regenerative relationships around seed, food, and your community. So thanks so much.